Hello, I am Gep, and welcome to another Factory Town tutorial. This time, we are doing the intro to Logic Blocks. And it is the intro, because Logic Blocks are very complicated. And this tutorial is going to be a little bit different than the other few that I have done. And we're going to be explaining more of that in a second. First, normal disclaimers, but more so than usual. One. I understand this concept enough to explain it, but I'm not an expert. There are people on the Discord and game sites and things that know more about this than I do. I've learned as much as I can. There's a chance I may make a few mistakes or leave a few things out, and I know people are going to add more information in the comments, so let's put good stuff down there. Also, this game is early access, as you all know, and if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know I put a little warning at the beginning that says because if it's an early access game, things may change faster than other games, so some of the information may be out of date by the time you watch this video, and I try to leave updates in the description or comments for people to see when the game changes, but it's not enough to make an entire new video out of. That being said, for Logic Blocks, there is confirmed going to be a major overhaul of how these function at some point in the future, at which point there will be a new tutorial that you can find in the description of this one. However, we do not know when that will be or how long we will be working with this system, so this is the system that we are going to learn because it's the one that exists now and can be useful for you. All right, how is this going to be different from my other tutorials? Well, one, this is on the screen just for you so that you have something to look at. We're going to be using it in a minute, but it really doesn't do anything demonstrative. In my other tutorials, I've basically gone through every single block in the system and told you what it does, how to connect it to things, how to use it. I want to do that for logic blocks. I really do. But one, they're more complicated than that. Each block is going to do some slightly different things depending on how you are utilizing it. I can give you a rundown of their basic functionality, but that would not tell you how to use the logic system because the logic system has some quirks to it that you need to understand before you can even realize what these blocks do or how to use them. So this is not going to be a rundown of every single block in the game. This is going to be a general overview of what the logic system is, how it works, how to connect it to things, how to control things in the game with it, and hopefully you'll come out of it with an understanding where you can begin playing with these systems yourself and make things. We're going to have a few examples of a couple of interesting machines just for demonstration purposes at the end that I find somewhat useful, like inventory sensors and the ability to control whether or not a building is producing items based on its inputs. And that's going to be something that you can see later to see how it all comes together. But I'm not trying to give you a bunch of here's some useful machines that you can put in your game. I'm not trying to give you a rundown of every single system in the game. I'm trying to give you a basic overview of what these blocks do, how they work, and how to connect them to things. Which means that this is going to be a little bit more scattered than some of my other reviews, as you can tell by this already overly long intro. The main thing here that I have personally struggled with, and I will admit to that, and I hope that this works out well for the explanation purposes for you, but there are several overlapping concepts that you are going to have to understand at the same time in order for this system to make sense. But unfortunately, as a teacher, I can only explain one system at a time. So let us just jump in. One, logic blocks are unlocked through the school by researching these compute blocks here. They're called compute blocks. Everyone calls them logic blocks because they use logic like you would use to program a computer. It's a basic logic function. Now you do have this whole list of blocks in here. They all do something different. We're not going to be going through a big overview. I'll explain the ones that we use as we use them. But right now understand that the overview for what every single one of these blocks does is something that's going to be later on and take a while. So don't expect that in this very intro video. Now, to use these, you grab them from the menu, or you can put them on your hotbar, which is set up here just for ease. Most of them have very, very similar icons at this point, so they're hard to sell apart except for looking at the little text overlay. Now, this is the toggle block, and you put the toggle block down just like everything else. Right click puts it down, left click does basically nothing, escape gets rid of it. You can use the X key, remove layer block, remove block layer, excuse me, to delete it, or you can use the delete key to delete it. There we are. Whew, that was all of that out of the way. 
So let's see what these do. So if you click on the toggle block, you have this little menu at the bottom that says toggle, and you can toggle it on and off. That's all the toggle block does. We'll go into some other functions with that later. A lot of these blocks have a way that you can interact with them. For example, if I click on the math block, it doesn't have a toggle, but it has this stuff up here, the math function. I can click into this menu, tell it what to do with the math, and I can sit in here and tell it a value. That's that value on the end there. Again, we're going to have to go into the math block in a second. <laughs> unfortunately logic lamp you can toggle on and off so basically most of these have either a upper right menu or a lower right menu that will let you turn them on and off or mess with some of the values for example the number block you can set a number that the number block will have why is that useful we'll find out in a minute i'm sorry that's going to basically be the case this basic overview several overlapping concepts i'm a little self-conscious about that which is why i keep over explaining it and i apologize by themselves, these blocks do nothing. Nothing at all. These blocks are not going to interact with the environment. Nothing you do to them is going to matter. They are going to sit here and do nothing at all. Okay? They interact with each other, and there are a few that can interact with the environment and then interact with other blocks. They can also interact with logistics blocks, which is a concept we're going to be going into in a minute. Once you have a block down, you can click on it. Now, if you hover over another block that it can be connected to, this would be logistics blocks and logic blocks. You can see here it says add logic link. So if we add logic link to, say, this logic lamp and we right click, right click and it connects. You see it has this little overlay that connects. So what does that do? Well, if we click this and we hit the toggle, we toggled it on, we toggled it off, we toggled it on, we toggled it off. That does nothing, because this toggle button actually doesn't do anything except for set what the block is set to. But it does not do the other thing that these blocks do, which is send a signal. Because there's two things that are happening here. One, you have whatever this block is set to. That gives you an idea of how it's going to interact with inputs. But it can also output, and just clicking on this toggle is not going to do an output. What you need for that is there's two ways to interact with the toggle block. You can hover over it and hit return, and that will do it. You don't have to have it selected, you can just hover over it and hit return. Or enter, depending on your system, keyboard, etc. Or, there's something else that you can do with these logic blocks, is you hold control, and you left click. There you go. Now I'm realizing I may have said left click when I meant right click in some places. This is your normal main mouse button, and you can set these things in the menu. So this is your normal main mouse button when you're connecting it to another block. That's your secondary mouse button. I have that set to right on mine. However, if you go into the options under, I believe it's interface, you can have here targeting method, secondary action. That will set whether you use left or right click to connect your blocks to each other. So. Now you notice, every time I control click this and it goes from one to the other, it's turning this logic lamp on and off. You see, now it's on, now it's off. It's turning the logic lamp on and off as it turns the toggle block on and off. That's the red and the blue lights on the logic lamp. Do, 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 disco, panic at the disco, do, do, do. Yes, singing break. But what is that actually doing? Well, we know that we have this toggle and it is sending a signal to this lamp that is activating it and deactivating it. But what does that mean? Does that mean that every time that this lamp receives a signal, it's just going to toggle on and off? Well, no, because there's another layer here. These blocks don't just send a single signal along a thing here. They send numbers. So if we click this again, it removes the logic link. And we can connect this to this number block. Now, the thing that the number block does is it will display any number that is input to it. Any number that another block sends to the number block will appear on the number block, and that's going to change every time that updates. This is another thing we're going to have to get into in a second. I'm sorry, that's layers and layers and layers. So if we connect the toggle block to the number block, and we activate the toggle block, you see, now this is one. This sent the number one to the number block. If we toggle it again, it's zero. So we've sent the number zero to the number block. So we now have learned that the toggle block, when it's set to off, will send the number zero. When it's set to on, it'll set the number one. And again, if you toggle it from the menu, it, it does not count as being activated, so it will not send the signal. So if we connect the toggle block to the logic lamp, it will send a signal to both the number block and the logic lamp when we activate the toggle. So you see one, the 
logic lamp has received one and turns on. And then it receives zero and turns off. So we've now understood that we have a binary system happening here. On is one, off is zero. So if you send one to a block, it turns on. If you send zero to a block, it turns off. That is how we are working so far, all right? But here's the other thing with how these logic systems work. It's a little weird. Right now we have everything connected to this one toggle block. So the toggle block is sending a signal both to the number block and to the logic lamp, and it is activating both of them. It's sending a number to the number block, which it is displaying. It is sending a number to the logic lamp, the same number to the logic lamp, which is telling the logic lamp whether it wants to activate or deactivate based on the number that it receives. What else can we do with this? Well, if we deconnect this from the logic lamp, the other thing to understand about these blocks, they all send signals. This is something that takes a little bit to wrap your head around, especially if you're coming from another system in other games where it doesn't do this. Every time something updates on a block, every time it receives a signal, it is going to try to send that signal along. It's going to pass through the signal. There are a few blocks that do this differently. We are not going to be covering those in this tutorial. There are two blocks off the top of my head I can think through that do not send through a signal, that do not send a signal of some kind once they are activated. There are some blocks that manipulate the signal that we're going to be getting into in a second. But for most of the logic blocks in this game, when they receive a signal, they're going to send a signal. So what does that mean? We have the toggle block, we have the number block, those are connected. But we take the number block, we can connect the number block to this logistics lamp. Logic lamp, excuse me. So if we activate the toggle, now it activates the lamp. Even though the toggle is not connected to the lamp, it sends a signal to the number block, which sends that same signal. It bounces that signal over to the logic lamp. So the number block receives one. It then goes one, and it sends one onto the logic lamp. If we do the same thing again, it sends zero, one, zero, one, zero. So every time that we activate the number block, every time the number block receives an input, it sends out that input to stuff it's connected to. So, boop, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Now, so far what we've been doing is using zeros and ones. All we've been doing is activating with zeros and ones. What if we have other numbers? Are zeros and ones all that these can carry? Well, no, because you can manipulate these numbers. You can add numbers, you can reduce numbers, you can do anything you want to the numbers, but they do it in an interesting way. So let's see here, if we take this math block. So let's disconnect all of these and reset these to zero. Now I can, you know, activate and deactivate the logic lamp. And if I activate and deactivate the logic lamp, it's uh, is going to send a signal just like the toggle. If I use the control click to activate and deactivate, uh, that basically acts like it's received a signal if I click it with the control click. But if we use different blocks, like say I have the number block connected to the logic lamp, see how it's not sending a signal? Even if we say set the value here to one and I control click it, it's not sending a signal. This does nothing. And there's some experimentation you have to do because you might expect control clicking this to be able to send a signal, but it doesn't. It just activate toggles, whatever you click it on, but that will send signals. Let's use the math block. Now what you might expect from the math block is that you send a signal in, it takes whatever number you have, says, oh, plus one, or whatever number, and then sends that on. And that's what it does, but it does it every single time with every single number. So the math block, you might expect, would say, if you receive a signal of one and a signal of one, output a signal of two. But that's not how it works. If it receives a signal of one and it receives a signal of one, it'll send out two signals of two at different times. I hope that makes some amount of sense. A math block takes the input adds whatever number is set here, and then sends it on the output. So let us demonstrate. We take the toggle block, we connect it to the math block, we take the math block, we connect it to the number block. We activate the toggle block. We know that this sends one. Actually, let us just for clarity's sake, add another number block. So let's turn this off and let us, why is this not connected? Add the number block, add a connection to that. So this has sent one, to this number block. So it's sending a signal of one. 
it sent one to the math block, which is sending a signal of one, which then adds one to that signal of one, giving us two. So we now have two as a signal here at the number block. Now, if we click the math block, again, doesn't send a signal. It just makes the noise. If we hit this again and toggle it, it sent zero, zero to the number block. This number block knows it's zero. It sent zero to the math block. Took that zero, added one, gave us one. Now what happens? What happens if we connect this math block to the logic lamp? Or as we've seen earlier, we could also connect the logic block to the logic lamp, the number block to the logic lamp, because that would basically do the same thing. So we take the math block and we connect it to the logic lamp. What is this going to do? Would you expect that it would still toggle on and off based on the input? Well, from what we saw before, if it receives a zero signal, it turns off. If it receives a one signal, it turns on. But now it's receiving a two signal you just saw. So it received a two signal and turned on. Now it received a one signal and it stayed on. So we've now learned any signal above zero will activate. Any signal above zero will activate this logic lamp. Which means if you have something like this where it's not receiving a zero signal, it will never turn itself off. It will never turn off because it's not receiving a zero signal. Not at all. So we've learned two things so far about the signal that these blocks carry. They carry a number. That number can be anything. That number can be anything. This is sending a one or a zero. It will always send a one or a zero, but we can use that number. We can manipulate that number. We sent a two. We can take this. We can tell it to add five. We can tell it to add five. Now when we click this, we have five or six. Now we're carrying a five or a six and we're sending a five or a six to this logic lamp. But we've also learned that zero and one or as I should say, zero or greater than zero, act like a binary signal to activate and deactivate. So this logic lamp gets deactivated if it receives a signal of zero, but it gets activated if it receives a signal over zero. So we have two things happening here. We have a number, we have an actual number that we can manipulate with math and other functions. And that will pop out a new number based on the math. But that number was also used as a binary on off signal to turn on or off other objects. Now, how do I use this? How do I use this practically in the game? Because right now this is just playing with numbers. It's not actually doing anything. Well, if you remember, if you have watched my logistics blocks tutorial, which I would recommend if you were trying to learn this. Logistics blocks, let's grab out a sorter just for an example. Logistics blocks up here have an item filter that is unnecessary here. It doesn't, it's not used. Watch the other tutorial for the item filter. But as an active status, off and on, off and on as an active status. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because we have off and on as a status here. And we have off and on as a status here. So what happens if we connect this toggle block to this sorter? What happens? Well, we hit it. It sends a zero signal. That zero signal just sent to the sorter and the sorter turned off, deactivating its functions. Now we sent a one to the sorter. That sorter turned on, reactivating its functions. This works for every single logistics block that has an on off which is most of them the barrier gate does barrier gate works a little weird but the barrier gate we can connect to the barrier gate we got the pusher the grabber the grabber is one that you really use a lot can connect it to the grabber can uh, connect it to the pusher can connect it to the splitter can connect it to the blocker can connect it to the filter you can't connect it to the rail stop you can't connect it to the one way because those two do not have a on off toggle get rid go away go away you're ruining my flow rail stop doesn't have an on oh does have an on off toggle excuse me so you can connect it to the rail stop yes i always keep flubs and uh oh you can't as an on off toggle but you can't connect it to the logistics system now that is interesting that is interesting can't connect it to the logic system so now if we activate this turns all these on barry gates weird because it inverts because on is open and off is closed so remember that if you're using a barrier gate for things and now the zero turns these off the one turns these on so does that hold true does that continue holding true let's deconnect all of these oh, we will keep it connected there let's deconnect all of these and let's connect them to this math block like we have it connected to the logic lamp if what we've learned holds true these should now stay on because they're receiving a greater than zero signal and they do 
So, that is what's up with logic blocks. That's what's up with them. You can connect them. They will send signals forward. So this number block here, if we disconnect everything from this math block, disconnect everything from this math block, connect up to this number block instead, the number block is still sending things. We have the number block hooked up so it can still send things. It's still sending a signal when it receives a signal. It still sends. So that's how the logic system works. It receives an input. It receives an input. That input is a number. That input is a number signal. The signal is an actual number. It is not just an on-off. It is not just a toggle. It is a number because you can manipulate that number with math blocks and the like. That number is then sent on to do things. If a zero intersects with an object that has an on-off toggle, the zero will turn it off. Any positive number will turn it on. Any non-zero number will turn it on. So you can use one and zero for those. But since any zero number will turn it off, it will turn off when you hit zero. It's a very interesting system, but it's a little confusing because this signal both activates, I guess I should say it activates the blocks because you see this received a signal, this math block received a signal, it got activated and sent a signal. It also received the six signal, which manipulated the number on the number block itself, as well as this. But that also activates the block to send its own signal. That signal is also a number, but that number is used in a binary way to turn objects on or off. So that's the basics of this. Let's get into a couple of more complicated things. Let's get into a, a couple of more complicated things. I shouldn't have deleted that math block. Shouldn't have deleted that math block. We need that math block. And with that number block. A couple of number blocks here. There's a couple of things here. So, math blocks manipulate the numbers. They do. So we saw, we send a one signal to that math block. It gets added to one, and that gives us the two on the other side. All right, fine and dandy. What are the other functions in here? Well, we've got subtract. You know what that does. Multiply, divide, equals, not equals, greater than, equal to or greater than, less than, less than or equal to, and modulo. We're not going to go into what every single one of these do, but you have these, which are the boolean, boolean functions. <laughs> I always say boolean functions, and I apologize. It's not soup. It's not soup. These are your boolean functions. They check a number against something. So let's say equals, because that's easy. So equal equal to one. This is a C++ uh, thing, I guess. Equal equal means equal to and only equal to. What's that gonna do? Well, if we send a zero, we send a zero, this sent a zero signal, and this sent a zero signal. That's interesting, right? This sent a zero signal for equal to, sent a zero. What we toggle again? Well, it sent a one, this sent a one, this sent a one, because this is equal to one, so it sent a one. Now it's sending a zero. That's a little unclear, because this is also sending a one or a zero. So let's do something else. Let's make this a little more clear for everybody. Let's grab another math block. Whoops, I accidentally clicked it down here. Unfortunately, that replaces the block. So let's grab another math block. Let's set this to be, let's say equal to two. All right, so if this equals two, eh, let's do three. If this equals three, and we'll set this math block to add two. All right, so let's set this toggle up here. So this is sending zero. Even when this says one, this is sending zero, and it is sending. It is sending a signal every single time you click it and is sending a signal that says zero. Let's disconnect this toggle, and let's connect this to this math block. Now, from what we've seen on this math block, we know, you know, let's grab another number block here. Whoops, I keep disconnecting these accidentally. Let's grab another number block here. So. What this does, when this is off, it sends a zero signal, which goes up to the math block, which goes to this number block, which we're using just for demonstrative purposes. It's unnecessary for main things. Goes to this math block. We see that that's two, because it's zero plus two is two. We do one, zero plus two is three. All right, so how would we expect that to interact with this math block? Well, let's look, connect the number block to the math block. Two, two, not equal to three, outputs zero. Two, three, equal to three, outputs one. So this is turning any number that it takes, it's checking it against its criteria. 
So it's checking it against its criteria. So equal, of course, means is it equal? Not equal means does it equal it or not? That's basically the opposite of equal. You see here, one send, two sends out a one because it's not equal to three. Three sends out a zero because it is equal to three. You know what greater than, less than, all of that stuff does. That's not what this tutorial is about right here because this is the intro. So let's change this back to equal because it looks friendlier, less computer science-y. So what we're doing here now, this math block is doing an interesting thing. It's taking our real number signal, it's turning into a different real number signal, but that real number signal has become binary. We've used this toggle to create our real number signal and turn it into a binary one and zero signal. That's pretty useful, isn't it? So, the overview. What do these things frickin' do? What do these things frickin' do? Well, when you activate one, it sends a signal. And we'll get into a little bit more things that in a second when I start getting into some practical examples here. You activate one and it sends a signal. That signal activates others. Anytime one of these is activated, it tries to send signals. It tries to send signals. It'll just send signals. Like if we copy this number block and we go dit 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 and we connect all these number blocks up in a row, connect all these number blocks to each other, Boom, it sent a one all the way down the line because this number block activated that number block, activated that number block, etc, 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 etc. Because each one activates the next in sequence because every time you activate one of these blocks, it sends a signal. Every time you activate one of these blocks, it sends a signal. Boop, boop, boop. There's some more advanced things you can do with that. But for the basics, this is what you need to know. It sends a signal. It can be manipulated. It's a real number. It's not just a binary on off. It's a real number. Zero being off, anything else being on. It sends a real number, which can be manipulated by math blocks and Boolean functions. Boolean functions? Boolean functions. There we go. Boolean is the soup mix. Boolean is a true false statement. And I apologize. That messes up in my mouth a lot. It does. It really does. Okay, you may be saying, well, that's all fine and dandy. Great, cool. I can do that. I can take a pusher and I can, you know, hook it up to this last number block in the sequence and it's going to go. Boom, 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 boom. Great. What do I do with any of that? What do I do with any of this? This is stupid and I hate you. And you have the right to. You definitely do. You should. You probably should. What do you do with this? Well, let me set up a couple of easy examples that I can show you. Let me set up a couple of easy examples I can show you how this interacts with stuff. We're going to need a building, though, so give me a second. Here's a simple little test rig I rigged up. I took a barn, filled it with weed. That's a different channel. Filled it with wood. <laughs> upgraded it a few times, because it's fun to upgrade things. We can upgrade it. Look how much wood we can put in this thing. Look at this. Console command A. Thousand wood. Whoops. Nope. Weed. 1,000. I'm stealing other people's jokes and I feel bad. Feels bad. So we got a thousand wood in this thing. We can send it over to this barn. And we can make it go in a little loop. So let's do that. There it goes. It's going in a little wood loop. Off we go. Great. This is the thing. Pretend this is a, you know, input source. This is a building you're manufacturing stuff in. It's your basic belt. It's anything on a belt. So what do we do with this? Well, there's a couple things we can do with this. Because there's a couple of uh, compute blocks that actually interact with the real world. We've got an inventory sensor. An inventory sensor is going to sense inventory. It's very simple. So what does this do? Well, this is how you interact blocks with the real world instead of just that toggle thing that I had before. This offset button tells this where to detect inventory from. You can detect it from a building like a barn. All right, you can detect it from something like a barn and you can tell it to filter. You can say, I only want you to detect wood. If you set it to zero, it's going to detect whatever's in the barn. It's going to detect all the stuff that's in the barn. It's just going to give you a number that's everything that's in the barn. You know, let's, um, for example, let's let's do this. Let's let's clear this. All right, clear that top one because the woods are going to keep going around in a circle. Just for demonstrative purposes, let's add some stone. Let's add a hundred stone to this. But whoops, other way, a stone. 100. Let's add 100 stone to this barn. There we go. That stone's never going to get removed. Oh, it is. Oops, because it takes from the top. It takes from the top and the bottom. I don't understand this. Oh, well, whatever. Whatever. That inventory. Let's, um, let's give us a math block or a number block so we can see what's going on. 
as we saw. So we take the inventory sensor, we go up to the math block. And you see, this is giving us a number, 840. 840. What is that? Well, that's 2, 4, so that's 500. All right, that's 500 together. 6, 7, 50. 7, 50, then 90. So 840, and it keeps toggling back and forth because that's how it works. Let's let's change this inventory. Let's say I only want you to show me the wood. That's 750 because we've got 500, 750 because it's only showing us the amount of wood in there. Let's uh, change this again. Let's say only show me the stone. Only show me the stone. 90. There we go. There we go. Now, why does this keep turning on and off? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing that uh, you need to know about these. Um, this is only going to change when something changes. So you see here this 83? This is not receiving a signal anymore. So even if we change this, even if we say, hey, filter, nothing. What's all in here? This isn't going to change because this only updates when this barn updates. We can even click it. We can control click it and try to activate it. It's not going to activate. This inventory sensor is only going to read inventory when the inventory itself changes. If this inventory is static, if nothing's being taken out or put into this inventory, this number is never going to change. It's never going to change. This is never going to update. I can change the parameters on it all I want. I can go, hey, okay, stop looking at that building. Look at this building instead. Well, this building has 11 stone in it, but nothing changed. Nothing changed, still showing me 83 on the number block because it's only going to change if the inventory changes. So if we start removing stone from this, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. There you go. The inventory changed. So that's something to know about inventory blocks. Let's remove the stone from this because I don't feel like messing with more than one thing at the minute. Actually, we can. You know what? Let's put the stone back. Let's put the stone back. Now, this is an old school thing, but it's, it demonstrates a concept. This is an old, old school thing, but it demonstrates a concept. Because uh, you used to not have sorters. You used to not be able to put filters on sorter blocks and uh, on sorter blocks and pusher blocks. So right now, if you wanted to say, get all that stone over to this barn, you would create a system like this. And you'd say, you know, sort stone. And then when you connected this, it would send your logs out that way, and then it would send your stone out the other way. Oops, I uh, took all the stone out of it, didn't I? <laughs> oh, this is why I keep I keep mistakes in. I keep mistakes in because people can see the mistakes and learn. So you see, now it's sorting stone. So there it goes. But this is an old school system. This is an old school system that didn't used to work. Didn't used to work, so... Why is this useful at all? Well, let's let's look at this. Let's look at this here. If you say uh, compute block and you do inventory sensor, let's have this inventory sensor set to this belt. Set to this belt. And then let's give us a number block so we can see what's going on. Connect it there. You see? One, 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 one. It's telling us it's activating because it's doing one. And you can set the filter. You can set the filter. It's like, you know, if I say wood. Well, that's zero, because there's no wood. If I set the filter to stone, well, that's one, because it's stone. Well done. We've done it. We have achieved. There's a quirk with this. There's a weird quirk with this. If we um, if we remove this, that's going to stay as one, because it won't clear. It only activates when something goes into the belt. This isn't something you strictly need to know, but when you're working with inventory sensors, this only works when something enters the square that it's looking at. Okay, so it's never going to clear. This is never going to go to zero when the belt is empty because nothing has entered to update the inventory. So that's just something to remember when using inventory sensors. So let's build an old school sorter. So if we took a pusher, let's pretend the pusher didn't have a filter on it. What do we do with this pusher? Well, we connect the inventory sensor to it. As we know, the one from the stone turns it on. And we know that the zero from the stone turns it off, that the zero will turn it off. So that would be from the wood which we saw when the inventory sensor is set to something that is not the filter, it goes to zero. Let's remove a lot of stone from this so that we don't have to wait around for all this stone to empty. So remove stone, now let's say nine, let's say 90, so we only have six stone in here. So if we connect this, you see this stays on, this sorts all the stone, but then it turns this off when it detects wood. Now, this didn't work well. 
this didn't work well, it's because of this slight delay. I didn't set it up quite right, but demonstratively, you see how it functions. You see how it functions demonstratively. If you want it to function perfectly, we should uh, set it to this block. Oops, sorry, wrong button. We should uh, do the offset and set it to the pusher block itself because when it enters, when something enters, it's going to change. There we go. See, we should set it to the pusher block itself. This is something you can do with this offset. You can have it measure on top of another block where you wouldn't normally be able to put the sensor. See, if we just, um, if we didn't have that, if we didn't set it to the offset and we just put a inventory sensor down, that's not what I'm looking for. If we just put down an inventory sensor on the belt, you know, the offset is technically zero. So it's going to work when things pass through it. But if you set the offset, it's going to measure where you tell it to measure instead of where you have it, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's an old school thing. You don't need to sort stuff like that anymore. That's not how that works. So you have other tools for that. So what do you use these for now? Well, you can use the inventory sensor. You can use the inventory sensor to do some stuff like this barn here. Now this barn might not actually be updating. Oops, sorry. You have to uh, right click. There we go. This barn might not actually be updating because it's moving inventory through it. See how the inventory doesn't technically go into the barn because the input and output happen simultaneously. So if we give this a uh, number block, if we give this a number block, it's going to be at zero. Oh, no, it's not good. It is updating. Okay. You can see the little line. You can see the little line going. Actually, let's move this farther over so that you can see it. Oh, you can't move number blocks. I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought you could move number blocks. Let's move this farther away so that you can more easily see the little line in between. There we go. See, it is updating. It's updating zero. But let's say we don't want it to have zero. All right, let's say that I want this barn to maintain an inventory. Like, you know, this is my storage barn. This is my storage barn. And I want wood. I want wood so that I can build build scaffolds and whatnot. I know that's not raw wood, but I want, I want raw wood. I want raw wood available for building. But I also don't just want this inventory sitting here doing nothing, right? I want to maintain a certain amount in this inventory without any, without other stuff. So the problem here, I'm, you can't put a grabber there. You can use a stopper. That works now. Let's put a blocker here. Let's put a blocker here. That's blocking the output from the barn. It's filling up. It's filling up. There we go. Now we know we can change this to a zero signal if we use a math block. So if we put in a math block, let's say, you know, I want this barn to maintain an inventory of 20. This is where this gets a little complicated. I'm going to do it another way just so I can sew. Let's say I want this barn to maintain an inventory of 20. So what I can do and connect this sensor. This is our inventory because it's just connected straight. I can get the sensor to the math block. I can say if this is greater than or equal to and 20, I'm going to set that and I'm going to connect it to a grabber. Now I can have this grabber here because it's not on the main exit. That can mess up some stuff. So I have this connected to a grabber, which grabs stuff out of the barn. And then I say, connect to this to the grabber. All right now it grabbed because it was on when it started. But you see, it only turns on when it's greater than or equal to 20. It keeps turning on and off because this keeps going. But if I turn the off this input, it turns off as soon as it gets to 19 and stops grabbing stuff out. Right? Similarly, turn, nope, that way. Similarly, if I turn this back on, it starts going on and off. If I turn this off so that this fills up a little bit, fills up a little bit, this grabber's staying on. This has nowhere to go. But then I let it empty. This isn't turning off yet because this is staying at like 45. It's staying above the number because this, as we've seen before, this signal here is putting out a one, which turns this on. If we cut off the input, if we cut off the input there, it will eventually fall down below 20. That'll turn this greater than or equal to block to set out a zero signal, which will turn off the grabber. So there's a practical application for how you can use this. Let's let's do the other one. Since I set up the other one, let's do the other one and you can see how that would work. Because you had a little bit of a problem. Uh, if you think about this with logic, uh, this blocker is a weird block because when it's on, when the blocker is on, it stops things moving. So we can set, so we can like connect it the same way. But because this is true, when this is true, when this is one, this blocker is on and that, you know, 
make stuff not move. So we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing. We can set this to less than or equal to. We can reverse it. So now when it's over 20, this turns off and it does the same thing. There's another way that you can do this and it gets into another block, which we're going to mention here. So let's say you want to not have that headache. Let's say you don't want to have to do the mental gymnastics. You just want to say, I want this to work when it's greater than or equal to 20. Or even just greater than 20. Let's be simpler than that. Let's say, I just want it to be greater than 20. I want 20 items in here. All right, but I don't want to have to mess with remembering that this is a different block that turns on and off in a different way. I just want my real number here so I can see at a glance this is greater than 20. Well, you can go in here and you can use these. You can use these bowl functions. These are Boolean blocks. These are weird, and we're not going to go into all of them right now, but basically these take inputs. These take the one or zero inputs from other blocks, and they look at them. So we've got an and or an or or a not and these work this the same way so and if you send it two ones it'll send out a one if you send it two zeros it'll send out a one it's just an and it, it looks and sees are both these the same are all the inputs i'm receiving true are all the inputs i'm receiving good or is one or the other input is good uh not and there's other things what we're interested here is not because that's just going to change this number full out uh this is a little confusing because I'm not going into detail on this, I just want to show you this one machine. So if you set this to not, it basically inverts the signal, because it takes the true, it says, well, that's a not, so not true, so zero. All right, let's cut off the input here so that we can see. So this is one, it's receiving a one, it's sending out a zero because it says not, not true. If it receives a zero, it's going to send out a one because it's not, so not, not, and true. So it received a not, it received a zero, and it says true, so it sends out a one. That's why these get confusing. <laughs> That's why these get confusing. So it received a zero because it's a not, it inverted it, and sent out a one. You can think of a not signal on a bool function as basically a bool function, excuse me, <clears throat> on a bool function. Uh, you can think of a not as inverting the one to a zero. All right, but it's if it receives a number that's higher than anything else, it's going to do something else, right? I mean, this still works with other stuff. Like, let's, let's say that we have that. Let's set it up with the grabber like we had before, just for ease. Let's set up with the grabber like we had before. Um, what if we just set the inventory signal directly up to the grabber? What if we set the inventory signal directly up to the grabber? Well, it sent a zero. It sent a zero signal, so it turned it off. That's not very useful because the barn's empty. So it's sent to zero. You could use that for some stuff. But any signal that it receives that's zero is going to turn it off. Any signal. That's the demonstration I was saying here. Any signal that it sends with the zero is going to turn it off. Let's look at one little thing that you can do with this that's a bit silly. But, you know, it's another demonstration. So let's let me set up something here really quick. Here's a logic problem that we're going to work through really quick just to get a handle on these things. All right. I've got this barn. And just for fun, we're going to say... Inventory sensor. Just for fun, we're going to inventory sensor this barn. It's got wood in it. And we're going to send that off to a number block. Alright, I have number blocks down here. We're going to send that to a number block just so we can see how much wood is in this barn. For fun! This is something you might want to do. A glance at inventory so you can see how much wood is in your barn. So offset, right click the barn, click on the inventory sensor, right click the number block. Boom. Now, as we said, that's not going to do anything. So actually, let's put down a little dude. You know what? Let's just do this really quick. If you, like, this stinks, all right? I, I wish there was a better way to do that. Let's just grab a magic belt and, uh, you know, output and input, cycle it around, then remove this, and there we go. So we've done it. We've put 999 in here. 999 in here. Unfortunately, we lost one. Whatever. We've got almost 1,000 in there. Because it's a fully upgraded barn. Here's my challenge. I want to fill these two silos. I want to fill these two silos. And I want to fill them evenly. I want to fill these two silos evenly. So what do I do? Well. I can have it like. Take one output. I can have two grabbers. Right? I can have two grabbers and say. Hey. Give me a. Sorry. <laughs> Give me a path block here. Give me the path block. I can have two grabbers and I can say, you know, just, just have them empty like this. And they're they're emptying. They're going relatively evenly. It takes one and one and one. You know, why not? It's doing that. But that's not exactly what I want to do because 
Well, I'll show you why. If we didn't just have this set up immediately here, if we were getting this input like normally, and we had this barn slowly feeding, if we had this barn slowly feeding, you couldn't do that because this would receive one and then it would kind of favor one or the other. So if we did the same thing, if we set up two grabbers, if we set up two grabbers and uh, two silos and two magic belts, well, now when this receives, it's only sending to the one side and this one's not getting anything. So let's say we want this to be even. I don't have any particular reason for this, it's just you know, let's say, let's say we want this to be even. How do we set this up? We've got an input going into here, all right? This is inputting into here. I want it to take out into these two silos and even out. Well, what do we do? Well, let's take what we learned. We need an inventory sensor for each of these. We need an inventory sensor for each of these, and just for fun, I want a number. I'm not remove, copy. I want a number so we can see how much is in each of these. You know, just easy, and we'll say, We'll set it to wood just because it gives us a visual representation. This is unnecessary as we just saw, but it gives us a visual representation of what we're looking at that you can see easily, which I like. So this one offsets to that silo. This one offsets to this silo. We're gonna have to learn a new block for this. We're gonna have to learn a new block for this. I just thought of that, but we're gonna go over that very quickly as we do this, all right? We're gonna learn one new block, and then later on in the advanced tutorial that I'm gonna come out with later, we'll learn what more of the blocks do. All right, I apologize for this being a little haphazard. This is just an example. So what do we wanna do? We wanna know what's in this. So this is gonna show us, this number block here is gonna show us what's in these silos. Right now they both have zero, that's correct. That's correct, good job. If uh, it adds, it's gonna up these numbers, so we're not gonna do that yet. How do I compare one to the other? How do I compare one of these to the other? Well, we're gonna have to learn a new thing for this. Because there's a couple of blocks that we didn't learn a couple blocks we didn't learn and one of them is called the logic set block the logic set block which looks like this little bracket what does this do well this sets so as we saw before we take blocks so we toggle and we take blocks and that sends out a number that sends out a number so yeah one zero one zero one zero that sends out a number. But if we sent this to a math block, that would manipulate that number, right? That would just take that number and manipulate it. So if we just hooked up the toggle of the math block, it would, this is now outputting one or two. We saw that already before, but it's not doing anything to the math block itself. But let's say we wanted to change the number on the math block itself. Well, that's what this logic set block does. The set block says, hey, don't just activate the thing. Change the number itself, so 0 and 1. 0 and 1, 0 and 1. And you see this orange? This orange means that it's setting, but that's not actually going to send another signal. Right? When it receives that orange, it changes it, but you see it didn't send out the blue that would set another signal. For that, we would need to connect this one. The blue signals carry through. The set signals don't. So now it's sending out a signal because it's adding from this. It's actually adding it to itself. We're basically doubling that number. So that's how the logic set block works. I didn't necessarily think it was going to explain that, but it's necessary for this example. Stop that. So what we want for this is to figure out which of these has more. So give us a couple of set blocks. All right, which of these has the more in it? So that the one that has more will get will not get any input that's basically what we're asking here so we have math block we need two math blocks we need this to say you know if it's greater than or equal to and if it's greater than or equal to and these need to be set from these inventory sensors so we send it to the logic set block we send it to the math block send it to the logic set block send it to the math block right now both of these are at zero so let's manually set those to zero so they start at the same number here. Manually set both of these to zero. All right, so because this went through the logic set block, that sets it. This will set the number to be the same as this, but we want it to also compare itself to the other silo. We want it to compare itself to the other silo. So here's what the logic's gonna be. We say this silo has this inventory in it. 
So we take this inventory sensor, we send it over here. All right. If this inventory is greater than or equal to the other one, if it's greater than, all right, we don't want it receiving anything else. If it's greater, we want the other one to be receiving. So we set that to this here, right? This is go. This is setting. This is saying how much is in this one. Is it greater than or less than what's in this one? So if it's less than what's in this one, if this is less, we want this to be active. So if this is greater than or equal to, the input is greater than or equal to. That means this has more, which this has less, which turn on that grabber. Then we'll do the same thing for this grabber. Now, let's see. This should work. Sometimes I get this backward. Let's connect up both of these and see what we do. So this went one. Nothing actually is happening. What happened? All right, that's set to seven, but it didn't actually compare. Four, eight, that's true, that's bigger. Ten, bigger than four, true. Ah, this one's not updating. This one's not updating at all. Yep. This, since this side is not updating, it's not sending the signal to compare. It's not sending the signal to compare things. This is where things get interesting. It's not sending a signal to compare things. So we need to add an extra step that I forgot about. We need to add an extra step that I forgot about. So let's not add those. <laughs> these are going to these number blocks. This should work. So now we're going to have to learn about a new thing. So we saw the logic set block. The logic set block sets the number. Now we're going to learn about the logic pusher block. The logic pusher block does basically what it says. It says push. So it receives a signal and it sends a signal, but it doesn't send a signal that will change anything. It sends a signal that will make it push. It's basically the control click. So if every time this inventory sensor updates, we tell it to push this other number so that we can do the check. Every time this updates, we're able to push the other number so we can do the check, and then we have the other number go to the other comparing. That should work. Yeah, there we are. Now it's turned off. Now you see this is filling because this one didn't go. 15, 20, 25, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now they're both the same, so they both turned on. 7, 7, 8, 9, 8, 9, 30. Now they are filling more evenly. I'm sorry, I had to very quickly explain what that pusher block did, and that's unfortunate. But as you can see, the pusher block is not actually changing the number. It's just telling the number to send on. So let's do a quick thing here. See, if we do a toggle block, and we do a pusher block, and we do a number block. So, as you saw here, pusher, number block, number block. If we turn this on and off, this pusher is sending this number block. Let's turn this number block to a number. Let's say this number block should be set to 15. Okay, 140, I guess. So this toggle is turning this on and off, and it's also sending the pusher. If we have another number block and we set this you know, number block to the pusher, you see this pusher block is activating that number block, but it's not changing it. It's just having the number block send to the number that's holding to the next number block. And that's what the pusher block does. We're going to go into more detail on some of these blocks in the next episode. But for now, this is your other example. This is number block this is logic blocks interacting in the real world. And I hope this has given you enough of an overview over blue. I hope this has given you enough of an overview to understand how the logic blocks are working, what they do, what these blue and yellow lines mean. We went through a few concepts, went through a few quick things. The main things to remember is every time a block updates, it changes the block number based on what it inputted to, or it compares. It changes a real number. Zero is off for anything that can turn on off, like the grabbers. Any other number is on for anything that can turn on and off, like the grabbers. You can manipulate some of the numbers around. 
and you can use those to create complicated systems like this one. Inventory sensors look at the inventory. There's also an item called a um, agent trigger, which turns on based on whether something passes by it on a belt or a road or whatever. We haven't gone over that. There's other things that you can toggle, untoggle, use to block signals, change signals around, block signals based on certain criteria, send signals again after a certain time. There's a lot of complicated things you can do. For now, play with it. See what it does. Take these basic steps that you learned on how to connect them together and how they push, how they keep updating the numbers, how they push forward, how they do other things like that. Take that and play with it. I encourage you to experiment. Load in a creative world. Think of a challenge like this. See if you can figure it out. Get onto the game Discord. Go into the logic block section. Ask questions if you're having trouble with it. It's a great resource and I recommend anyone to go there. You can find the game Discord, alright? I, I don't I can't really put a good invite link anywhere because I don't run the thing, so I apologize for that. But you know, go into the factory town stuff, find the game Discord. And there's a logic block section on there where you can ask questions of people who know more about this than I do, who have designed like the wiki tutorials and things. So that'll do it for this. If you have questions, do leave them in the comments. Uh, anything that is outside of the scope of this particular tutorial, we're going to cover in the advanced logic tutorial. And I'm going to do some videos on how to build machines. So if you have a machine that you want to figure out how to do, if you have a logic problem you want to solve that you'd like to see in a video, some kind of machine like, hey, how do I sort barns evenly? How do I add all my barns together? How do I make it turn off in this certain situation? Tell me and I'll add it to the list of like logic videos that I plan on doing later. I hope this overview was helpful. Again, help in the comments, changes, any kind of updates and things in the description. I know this was a little bit different. It's difficult to explain this because it's a lot of overlapping concepts. So I hope this was not too confusing for you. I know it's a different format than a lot of my other videos. And we'll do a format that is much more like that in the next one, which is going to be the advanced logic blocks, which is going to tell you what the logic blocks themselves do apart from this little overview. So if you were confused on what one of the blocks did, like one of the ones that I had at the end here, like the pusher or the, you know, boolean function or the pusher set, whatever logic blocks, uh, we're going to be covering those in the advanced tutorial. The basic tutorial, I hope, just got you a good framework for how to connect them together, what the signal is carrying, how the numbers work. It's a little bit confusing. It's hard to wrap your head around. So give it a good experiment. All right. Thank you for watching. Look forward to more tutorials. I put some effort into these, so it really helps if you, you know, like, comment, do the YouTube share things. I hate begging for that kind of thing. I really do. It puts a hole in the middle of my soul to do so. There's a hole in my soul where my money should go. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole. All right, fine. Stop singing King of the Hill things. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you learned something. Ask questions, leave comments, corrections, all those things. And I will see you next time.